back, you friends. What is up? I hope you guys are having the best day. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to come on camera and film this because um, I'm not sure how to film a collage, but I figured it'd be fun to kind of just talk you through what I had picked for my collage and what I was doing. Um, so when I went through and I cut my photos out of magazines, I was really attracted to anything that felt like an open space. So I have two pictures of some giant plates of food because what's one of the things I want to work on in 2020 is cooking more and eating less takeout because Joshua and I are home more often. Um, and there were a few specific things tied to goals. Like I want to pick up my stitching again. I, I had a, I was doing a ton of embroidery and it was really good for me. Um, and then, you know, my, I was really short on time, so I stopped doing it. So I found these two images that were related to stitching. I really want to pick up embroidery. I have this picture of, like, a map because um, I want to travel more. And then everything else, I was just really attracted to open spaces. So I picked up this window, this bathtub with the light, this open bed, this woman jumping over something, some more windows. There are a lot of windows here. Um... Oh, and then the other thing that's like really goal specific is I want to try growing things. I have whatever the opposite of a green thumb is. Everything I touch dies. So I had these two pictures of succulents because everyone says succulents are easy to keep alive. So that's something I want to try. Um, I have this open couch just because I like the space. I like the idea of it being open. I do have this picture of books because I do want to read more this year. And then I saw this page that had a bunch of like, like I had a bunch of Valentine's theme magazines because I bought magazines January going into February for this. And I loved these open hearts. So I'm going to do something where I kind of layer these open hearts over each other. I really like that. Um, what's in the hearts is less important. It's more of the image of the open hearts. So here's what I have as far as images go. Um... And I just went through magazines, like I put some music on and just went through magazines and started cutting things up. And then I have a bunch of words. Um, so like this says, life is better when you're in it, be there. And this was actually for a Depends ad, so it made me laugh because I was just like, huh, that's kind of perfect. I like this one, tough, bold, badass. Uh, love for all the right reasons, inner happiness. Um, this one really got me. I tried to soften the toughness of the terrain with a little tenderness. And couldn't we all use a little tenderness when things are tough? I love that. This one just says a warm welcome. Design, build a maze, join the community, a nourishing new year. Homecoming starts with a home and love your heart. Um, and when I, when I did this, I, I alternated between what feels like open to me and what just feels good right now. So there's a bunch of, there's things, like I said, that feel directly related to my word. And there are things that are in here because they just feel good to me right now. Um, with, with vision boards, it was really easy for me to kind of get stuck into that, like, hustle culture, like I want a house, I want more money, I want a bigger savings account. And that was not what I wanted my vision board to look like. So every time I saw something that like had money, I instantly wanted to cut it out. And then I was like, Tashiana, is that something you want? Or is that something you feel like you should want? And if it's something that you feel like you should want, and it's not something that you actually want, it doesn't belong on the vision board. So I'm really happy with what I cut out. My plan is to do a four page spread. So I have this piece that I kind of like MacGyvered to be, um, oh no, I just lost my words. I kind of MacGyvered it to be 14 by 8.25 because my plan is to have it kind of like this, have a vision board here, have it fold out to here, and then have some more on this side. So I have a bunch of pieces of paper. Um, the food one is going to be by itself. I need to stop throwing things around because magazine paper is super light and I'm going to lose everything. The food one's going to kind of be by itself and then I'm going to build around it. That heart one's going to be by itself and then the middle one's just going to be what the middle one is. So I am eventually going to do other stuff around this page. Like I want to include the February cork prompts. I definitely want to include some more of those braided hearts that I made in January. I have no idea how. But I figured I'd start with the vision board, and once that's done, everything else will kind of fall into place. So I'm going to stop talking now, and I'm going to get to work, and we're going to see what happens. All right, party people, so let's get to work. Um, this voiceover is going to be a mix of me talking about what I'm doing on screen and then just talking about how I lived my word this month because uh, collaging is not really something that you can teach. It's kind of a personal a personal taste. Um, so sometimes you know what you want and sometimes you don't. So what I decided to do for this piece is I decided to start with a lot of the bigger pieces first. When I cut everything out of the magazine, I just ripped things up and 
then I use my paper trimmer to kind of give things um, discrete edges and to give me rectangles of different sizes. So I have like that big one that had the plants that was uh, almost half the size of the page. And then I have a few of these that are skinnier, some are wider, some are larger than others. And I am just mixing the shapes and varying what goes in front and what goes behind just to add some interest to the page and just to, to do what makes me feel good. Now I, I run out of glue on this and so I struggle a little bit with my glue and I'm honestly considering going back and covering this in collage medium or matte gel medium or something um, after I take the pictures and it dries uh, just because I my glue stick didn't hold up really well and I want this this um this vision board to hold up and to stand the test of time. Um, but I'm just using Elmer's craft bond to stick things down to my page. And so what I did was I had a little bit hang off the page. So I'm just going in with my scissor and trimming it off. And now you're going to see pretty much what the, um, the large 14 by 8, I think is what it size, the large 14 by 8 vision board looks like. So the first thing I did was put all my photos in and I left gaps intentionally because I knew I was going to go back and add words. And then I reached into my pile and now I'm adding the, the words to the vision board. And I like the way it looks with just the big images first um, because it helps me be discreet about where I want to put words and it helps me be choosy. Um, and the thing about the words is I chose not to have them have the nice neat edges that the photos had I thought it would be really interesting to vary that texture and to have some of it be scribbled in so now you can see through the magic of editing that I've added all of my words for the most part, um, and some of them were longer phrases that I cut up so I could stack. Some of them I left exactly the way they were in the magazine, and I just layered it and glued it down. So I added um, a lot of the ones that had the more green tint, I added to this page um, because I knew that I was going to have the other one that had uh, the red, and I knew that I wanted the one that said A Nourishing New Year to be on the first page. Um, I don't want to call it the title of my vision board, but the first page is the first page you see. And so I knew I wanted a nourishing new year to go on that page. So I put most of the ones that had the green tint on this one. And now I'm working on the, um, the intro page for lack of a better word for my vision board. And since I had those two, um, food pictures that were mostly circles, I decided to just cut the rest of my photos down into circles. I thought that would be a really fun repeat element. I mean, just because we're working on a vision board doesn't mean like all the things that I do on my pages go out the window. And since I had those two circles, I thought it'd be fun to repeat that circle. Um, so you'll see I grabbed the picture that had the embroidery hoops and I cut it into a circle. It was originally a rectangle that I cut down. And so I just decided to go ahead and cut that into a circle to repeat the circles. Oh my God, I forgot to edit this. I almost edited this part out. My husband called me in the middle of me working on my vision board. He is... Uh, a trial sometimes. Um, but you see, I trimmed, I cut the, the circles down um, that my embroidery hoops are on um, and put that on the bottom left corner. That is the bottom right. The bottom right corner of this intro spread. And so now you see how fun it looks repeating those circles. And this wasn't something that I had intended to do, but it just worked out that I had those embroidery hoops that were also a circle. Um, and then I took that other picture of the plants that I had that I had showed you in the beginning, the other picture of the succulents. Um, and because the dish was kind of round, like it wasn't a perfect circle, but it was kind of round, I cut the photo down along the, the size of the dish. And now I have another round photo to work on. And I just think it looks so good having all those circles. And you guys, pretty much all I do for this is just put down the title. Like because I had those fun round elements, I didn't think it needed anything else to like add to it. I left the four big pictures because they're the four things that I really wanted to add back to my life. I wanted to add healthy eating. I wanted to get back into stitching. I really love embroidery, you guys. Um, it was something that was so therapeutic for me to do at the end of the day. I would just literally come home, put on the TV, hang out in front of the couch, and then just stitch for like an hour. And then school and everything else happened. And, you know, prioritizing is necessary. And so that kind of like fell off. But I said I wanted to, I've been talking to Joshua a lot about how I wanted to pick back up stitching this year. And when I was flipping through the magazines, when I saw that picture of the embroidery hoops and the pictures of the floss, I was like, all right, maybe that's the universe's way of telling me it's time to pick that back up and go back to things that bring you joy. So I stitched down up. 
I didn't stitch. I glued down a nourishing new year. Same thing. I cut up the title into um, strips and layer that over. And I think that looks, first of all, I think that green looks really striking with all the reds and the yellows on that page. And then there's enough green on it to kind of pull it all together. And so now I'm working on the back side of my vision board and I do the same thing. The bright side and it almost looks like I planned this, but I promise you I didn't. Uh, I just had a bunch of like smaller rectangles left for this side. Like I used all of the larger rectangles on the other side. So it just kind of worked out that I had a bunch of smaller rectangles and you'll see that the rectangles I had left filled up the page perfectly. And I talked about this in my intro before, you know, I decided to put music on and start working, but I was really attracted to open spaces and open windows. So every, I really wanted to a few open doors, but I couldn't find any pictures in the magazines that were open doors. But, um, it was less the, um, like I said in my intro, it was less what the word meant to me and what made me think of the word. So an open window makes me think of being open. Um, and so this picture just at this side ended up just full of open windows and open couches and open spaces. And then there's that map on the bottom that sadly gets covered up by the time I put all these hearts. And like I said before, I layered all these open hearts and this Honestly, this page kind of feels like an art journal page. Like this feels like something that I would have collaged together in my art journal because the open windows in the background just feel very light and airy and they almost end up being monochromatic in the tones. They're all like blues and grays and, and whites. And then you have this huge punch pop of pink and red on top of it. Um, I feel like it's very striking. And I really, really like how that came out. And so that just goes on top of my windows. And now I'm adding a few more words. And I decided to add three phrases. And I had two phrases and then I realized that I needed one more. So I eventually pulled back out my magazine so I could find another phrase to stick down to this side of the vision board. That, um that phrase in the in the middle of the hearts I'm going back to my vision boards I can tell you exactly what it says I don't want to ruin it but that phrase in the middle of the hearts that said I tried to soften the toughness of the terrain with a little tenderness oh that speaks to me so much that was so good and so the other one I put down was inner happiness and then I go back into the magazine flipping to see what grabs me and I end up with the the phrase that said divine intervention um which I'm surprised I missed it the first time. Like, I think I must have been flipping through too quickly and it, it just did not, like, stand out to me, probably because it was the white. I find that when it's white text, I mean, black text on white paper, I tend to, like, overlook it. Um, and I don't know how I missed it the first time, but it definitely made it onto my vision board this time. And so now, pretty much... All I do is go back and add some words to my middle page. I wanted to make sure that I didn't put all the words on the the middle page and not leave myself any words for the outside. So I go back and add that green that says love your heart. I add a few other things. So some of the things that uh, the words on that say life's better when you're life's better when you're in it. Be there. Love for all the right reasons. Design, build a maze. Join the community. A warm welcome. Just things about being open and having an open heart. Um, so whatever comes next. And so now I'm cutting this down to seven inches by 8.25, um, which is the size of the page protector. I realized after doing this that I had probably should have made my vision boards a tiny bit smaller um, because they do butt up right against the edge of the album. And that's because when I cut the papers down, the magazines go over the papers. And that is, you know, my own fault. That's human error. That's not anyone else's error. Um, so my pages do kind of butt right up against the edge of the album, which does not bother me. And I think it'll still be safe in the long run. But that's just something that I noticed that I would have done a little differently and then I attach my pages to each other and look you guys that's how my vision board is going to look in my album so I grab that six hole punch that I use in all of my Allie Edwards albums and I punch the holes in both sides of the albums and so I'm just double checking the holes and measuring it and making sure things go where they're supposed to um and that's how it's going to go into my album. I love this six hole punch. If you have any of Ali's albums or the Studio Calico albums or even the Citrus Twist Life Crafted album, this six hole punch lines up perfectly with the holes in those books. Um, I've had it since December Daily like three years ago and it is a go-to, like I use it all the time. And so now I'm putting it in my book 
you can kind of see the backside of January. Um, so I'm putting it in my book. And honestly, I could have stopped here. Like this was the February prompt. The February prompt was to make a vision board. And I totally could have stopped here and left it alone. But I decided that I wanted to make an intro page to February since there was nothing on the vision board that said that this was February. And I wanted the continuity from January. Like I used the cork word from January. And I just wanted to repeat bits and pieces that I did already. So I decided to print a photo of myself on four by six and pulled out one of the four by six tags from I want to say 2018 but I'm not sure um, and I attached it and at this point you can kind of follow what I'm doing so I do want to talk about my word uh, a little bit to you just kind of like share what I've been do what I've been doing to make my word more visible and to live my word um, so since February has Valentine's Day and it's like the month of love and everything else, I decided that I was going to attempt to practice radical love. Um, and that means a lot of things to a lot of people. But I decided I made a list of the ways that I wanted to show love more in my life. And that was going to be the way that I chose to make open more visible in my life in February. Um, so I actually did some journaling about this and I can kind of read you my journaling because this it pretty much explains exactly what my thought process was. So it says practice radical love, love myself, love others, love this earth, love my gifts, love my flaws, love my husband, love my job, love the highs and the lows, love all the places in between. Um, and so I like to think that I'm, you know, I like to think that I show love on a regular basis. I have no problem with telling people I love them. Growing up, I never really did. And then I met my husband and he like told me he loved me like almost five times a day to the point that I was just like, Joshua, stop saying that. And it has become such a habit for us that now I say I love you to everyone. Um, and it's just become part of me to show love to other people. But I think it's, it's different saying I love you and then actually like putting words to that action. Um, and so it just, it kind of worked out that the Pieces of Us challenge was in February because that was the way I chose to practice radical self-love of myself. Um, so I, you know, I took those seven photos and I did some journaling, but I did a lot of things for my husband that I haven't done in a while as a way of showing him love. I mean, if you're, if you're familiar with the five love languages, there's languages that we receive love in and languages that we show love in. Um, and my husband, the language that he receives love in is acts of service. And so I found myself doing things for him that I wouldn't normally do or that I haven't had time to do as a way to show love and then I found myself like doing things around like as far as loving the earth I've been recycling more than I've ever recycled in my life um, Joshua likes to yell at me for not recycling I try to do better um but I've been recycling more. We actually bought a Brita filter so we could decrease the amount of plastic that we're generating as a household. Like smaller changes that I'm making just as an act of love. I've been, my sister and I, you know, we talk fairly regularly, but I made it a point in February to call her every single day. To the point that she was like, why are you calling me so much? And I was like, is it a problem? And she's like, no, I love talking to you, but like we normally don't have time to talk this often. And so I've been doing all of these things in February as a way of being being open, like just opening myself up to the world around me, to others, um, and just trying to be a more present person in my life. And it has been so good, so good. And now March is coming and I need to think of a habit that I can do for every day. And I'm like, shucks, I just did something like that in February without even remembering that the March prompt is coming and I had to think of something that I can do every day. But my word has been so good to me this month and I am so glad that I made, you know, that I'm making an effort. Like it's one thing to pick a word and just do nothing with it. And it's something completely different to make an attempt to live your word and to invite it into your life. And so that's what I've been doing in February. I'm hoping that it sticks because February felt really, really good. Um, so fingers crossed that that keeps going. So back to the process. So I did a few things. Um, I took out a journaling card, added that sticker that says this month I will and read the journaling that I showed you. Um, I added another journaling card and put the chipboard my story on it. And then I spelled out my word on a label and added a sticker that says make your word visible. Put that on a journaling card and put that in the pocket. And now... I did this last month, but I did say that this was something I was going to try to keep doing every month. So I cut out a lot of the footage because if you really want to see how I do this, like in depth, I would go back and watch the January video. Um, 
because if you watch me do this, it's the same thing, just different colors. I grabbed a brayer, grabbed some Distress Oxides, uh, made a ink background. I do this, I've been doing this in my art journal a lot, guys, just to, to let you know. It is a really fun technique to add to your art journal. Um, and then I pulled out my Adore You stamp set, which is getting so much use. This stamp is so loved, if you can't tell by how inky and how gross it is. Um, and I cut out my flowers. And like I said in my January video, I think this is going to be an element that I use to tie my album together. So I think as the seasons change, it'd be fun to change the color palette of the flowers that I end up making. These, This color palette, even though I use different colors, ends up being very similar to the color palette that I use in January. And then I just, I had the coordinating die, so I used my Sizzix Big Shot to cut those flowers out. Um, and then I layered them over my photo. So I in, intentionally saved the, um, the, the magazine cutout that said Tough, Bold, Badass, because I wanted to put that over the photo of myself. Um, so it just, it worked out really well that I saved that. And then... I layered some flowers on top of that photo. So you see that photo was directly attached to the backside of my tag and I punched holes in it so it could go right into my album. And then I layered some flowers on the bottom. I always screw up my left from my right. So this is the bottom right side of my photo. Um, and I'm okay with it covering up a fair amount of my face. I know this might drive some of you crazy, but I'm not even looking at the camera anyway. And in all actuality, like I know what I look like. like I don't need this to remind me. Um, but I really wanted to add those flowers and then to make sure that I had enough room for that magazine cutout. So it ends up coming up really high on the photo. But like again, that that's not something that bothers me so much. And then I uh, add some more flowers on top of where the words are just to knock it back and to blend it into the background because I don't want the flowers to look like something that I put there and then forgot about. So I felt like putting the flowers again on top of the um, on top of the words helps it all just look a little bit more cohesive. And then I flip the tag because I have a few more flowers left. I flip the tag and I put some more flowers on the other side. And I'm just using uh, Tombow Mono Liquid Aqua Glue to attach this because honestly, I couldn't find my fine line bottle. That's literally the only reason I'm using this and not my Scotch Quick Dry. I couldn't find my fine line bottle while I was working on this. I didn't want to waste any time looking for adhesive. So I grabbed the first adhesive I could find and that's what I use. And then again, I repeated the same thing on the back. I repunched my holes using my power punch because my holes got a little covered up by all the flowers. And then I grab a sticker from the same um, cardstock sticker sheet that I use on the other side and added a sticker that says, hold on, I'll tell you what it says. It says, I can do this. And I just layered it over the flowers. I had to use a little bit of glue on that sticker because since the, the paper has all that Distress Oxide ink on it, the sticker didn't actually want to stick. So I just used a little bit of glue to stick the sticker down. I added that February chipboard to the photo just to, you know, signify that this is February and I had so many things that said the month of the year. And um, for the most part, I think that's the process done. Like. I spent a lot of time playing with the vision board and then I spent a lot of time making flowers, but everything else was nice and quick and easy and I love how this came out. I love how put together and cohesive it feels. I will eventually add a note to self card in that empty space. And um, I'm gonna stop talking now because the video is gonna pick back up where I do my exit and show you what I made and talk to you about my feelings. So I will see you in a little bit. All right, friends, so that is the end of uh, my February process. I had a lot of fun with this one. It, um, it definitely just became like an organic beast of its own. It took on a life of its own and just kept going. So here's how it looks all put together. So I have this tag. This is from 2018, I think, from One Little Word 2018. I uh, repeated my braided flowers. I definitely said I wanted to do these every month to just have that be a uh, element to tie the whole album together. If this is your first time here, um, I do have a process video for January. But I made these braired flowers in January and I honestly was hoping for a different color palette and I used completely different color inks and they look really similar anyway. Um, but I made these braired flowers in January 
and use them in my January spread. So my thought process was throughout the year, see here they are again, my thought process was throughout the year to make them in different color palettes and have that be a repeating element. You'll notice this is blank. That's because I'm gonna do a note to self, but I'm gonna do it on my computer, type it up, cut it down and put it in here. So in the final pictures, this will be full. I have my February on my cork. I have a filler page. I just wanted to do some journaling about something that I might, one of my, one of my goals for the month of February. So because February was like the month of love, I decided to do like a radical self-love and radical love of other thing. Um, so I just journaled about that. I have my word again. I want to try to find a way to put my word in it every month. And then here is my vision board. And I love how this came out. So I have this page and then it opens up and then I have this page and then it finishes up here. And honestly, these hearts are probably my favorite part I'm probably gonna have to go back and put some collage medium or some sort of gel medium over this because um, I'm worried that this isn't gonna hold up. So I might actually do that, go back and add some collage medium or some gel medium. But you guys, that's February in the One Little Word book and I got it in right at the end of the month, right at the nick of time and it's, oh, I've never made a vision board in an album, but this is definitely going to be something that I'm going to probably do again going forward because this was so much fun. So that's all I have for you guys today. I will see you um, in March. I haven't figured out what my habit is going to be for March because um, the March prompt is normally pick a habit that you're going to do the whole month. I haven't figured out what my habit is going to be. I'm going to sit down in a little bit now and think about what I want to do for this month. But I love how this came out so much and I'm so glad this is in the book. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you're so inclined. Hit the notification bell at the bottom somewhere so you never miss a video and I will see you around. Bye!